Hey everyone, it's Alessandro here from LazyGamer.net. I'm sitting down with Ryan Boyer from Far Cry 4. Hi Ryan, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Good to be here. Good. And you're enjoying South Africa for the first time, yeah? I am, very much, yeah. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to, uh, to enjoy the country a little bit more after the show, but uh, yeah. Awesome. So, Far Cry 4 is a huge sequel to, I mean, Far Cry 3 was a massive game, essentially. Um, you had your villain Vars, you had this massive tropical island. How do you even begin starting to one-up a game like Far Cry 3? Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to do, but Far Cry 3 was a, obviously a really huge success. Uh, it was a massive game. Um, as we were finishing Far Cry 3, we all already had a bunch of ideas of stuff that we wanted to do for Far Cry 4 uh, to really you know push what we had uh, done so successfully with Far Cry 3. Uh, and basically just got to work from day one, and uh, I think I mean, we have an amazing demo on the floor that you'll be able to check out a little bit later. Uh, and I think you'll see that we definitely were able to one-up uh, Far Cry 3. I'm definitely keen to give it a try very, very soon. Um, speaking of Far Cry 3, I mean, Far Cry 3 was known for its villain Vars. Vars was the face of Far Cry 3 and one of the most memorable characters in gaming history. So how do you start, I mean, imagining to go one-up from him? I mean, Pagan Min is a very, very good start. It is, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, it's, it's, it's tough to do. Vars was a really a new, unique character that uh, resonated with a lot of people. He had a um, you know a wide range of uh, of emotions that he portrayed on the screen, and it's uh, it's sometimes tough to capture that lightning in a, in a, in a bottle for a second time around. Um, but uh, Pagan Min offers uh, a, a really uh, unique approach as well. Um, you know, he's a little bit different than than, than Voss in that. Uh, uh, Voss is more of the uh, schoolyard bully, yeah. I would say, uh, whereas Pagan Min is uh, more the guy uh, with his hand around your shoulders, whispering in your ear things to do, uh, which is uh, which is really uh, you know a, a unique narrative line uh, throughout the story. Uh, so tough to tough to do, but uh, I think what we've already shown of Pagan Min, and uh, when you use your hands in the games, you'll definitely see that he's uh, as memorable, if not more, than, than Voss. And does Pagan Min have his own like special weapons? I always imagine him putting like a golden gun from his little pink suit. Or something like that. He looks like he might pull out a golden gun from that, uh, from that, uh, that the uh, the pink, the pink jacket. Um, no unique weapon. I mean, uh, I don't want to talk too much about uh, about that. We might leave it up to you to when you actually get to play the game. Um, but uh, he definitely has a unique set of characters that are around him. Um, you know, he's obviously uh, running uh, Kirat, which is where the game takes place, with the kind of a, an iron fist, and he yeah. needs to have uh, his uh, his lieutenants and his people around him, and so. Um, Pagan, Pagan Min is basically just one character, and there's plenty of other supporting characters around him that kind of fill out the uh, fill out the gaps around it. Awesome. And speaking of Kriat, I mean Kriat is a big. It's a sidestep from what Far Cry 3 was, this tropical island now to this more Himalayan mountainous setting. Um, how important was it to keep movement you know, free and accessible to the players while also giving them all these different movement options throughout the, you know, the, the uh, environment? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I think we've done that really well. What, we, what we've done is actually offered a bunch of uh, amazing tools to the player to be able to navigate this world. You're right, it is a, it is a mountainous region. Uh, that we do have that verticality, but it just adds to the gameplay. So. Uh, we have things like the wingsuit, which is back from Far Cry 3, and uh, if you can imagine using wingsuit uh, through mountains and off mountain cliffs, uh, it's it's a lot of fun to play. Uh, we've been showing off the elephant uh, in, in the demo, so you can ride the elephant and use that. Vehicles are back uh, en masse, there's tons of, of vehicles that are uh, at disposal of the player. The gyrocopter is, uh, is a new one as well, so uh, if you want to be able to just fly across terrain really quickly. Uh, and the grappling hook, which uh, AJ can use to actually climb up the mountain. So we've given a, uh, a wide range of tools to the player to be able to use to navigate this, uh, this more treacherous terrain. And I mean, speaking of elephants, elephants have been a huge talking point for Far Cry 4. Everyone's loving these weaponized elephants. Was that just a, an evolutionary step of what was in Far Cry 3? You had the, you know, the caged animals and outposts and stuff like that. It seems a lot more organic and free now. Yeah, we, we wanted to push uh, animals. They were really successful in Far Cry 3, but we wanted to bring something uh, something new. And uh, a lot of uh, people on the team really wanted to have elef elephants, actually. Uh, and uh, as you can see from the from the demo and the videos you've already seen, uh, there's a, there's a reason behind that. They're they're extremely fun to play with, uh, and it just adds uh, another dimension to the gameplay. And you've got, I mean, you've got elephants, you've got tigers, monkeys. Even I've seen from the season pass as well. There's going to be more monkeys or something like that. Honey so. badgers. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. Honey badgers. Yep. And, and eagles, I think, apparently. Yeah, there's an, like e there's an eagle or two in there. There's a lot more animals that you'll see when you play the game. <laughs> and uh, what's great is actually because uh, the, I mean, the world is so massive and there's all this verticality going up and down, as you move through uh, through the uh, the altitude in, in Kirats, you'll actually see the, uh, the flora and the fauna. So the biomes will change, the animals that you'll encounter will change as you move through the, uh, the world. So it's not just all the same animals in the same location, you'll get to a new area and you'll discover new animals. So uh, that's, that's pretty interesting. So is then crafting also a big key focus in, in Far Cry 4? I mean, in Far Cry 3, you, you uh, hunted animals for, you know, bigger ammo satchels and yeah. upgrades to your weapons. So is that all back in Far Absolutely. Cry 4? It's back and bigger and better. Yep. More improved. And also, I mean, weapon customization was also huge in Far Cry 3. You could basically rip apart any weapon and put whatever you wanted on there to suit your playstyle, essentially. Uh, has that been built on in Far Cry 4? So weapon customization is uh, customization is in Far Cry 4. Uh, there's uh, options for the player to be able to, uh, you know, build their arsenal the way that they want to build, the way that they want to take down outposts, the way they want to do missions, you know, if they want to do stealth, we have a, a new great uh, automatic uh, weapon that you can that you can use, the automatic crossbow, yeah. uh, which we've been showing off a little bit. So, uh, yeah, weapons are back, customization is, is in there, but you're able to actually build an arsenal that you can use to fit your play style, which is, uh, you know, something great that uh, anybody that played Far Cry will, uh, will love. And obviously there's those playstyles still open to you. I mean, Far Cry 3 had your stealth, your, you could go in guns blazing and stuff like that. Is everything catered for in Far Cry 4 as well? Yeah, any playstyle at all. You want to go stealth, you can go stealth. You want to go guns blazing, kick open the door. Or better yet, not kick open the door, ride an elephant through the door. <laughs> if you want to do that, it's available to you. So we've, uh, we've you know, just upped the amount of uh, uh, options that the player can use uh, to, to attack the world, basically. Speaking personally, I mean, Far Cry 3 was a great game, but I felt that narratively it uh, faltered a little bit, especially near the end. How, how many lessons did you learn from that um, going into Far Cry 4? Did you want it to make it more narratively driven? Well, I mean, you know, Far Cry games have always had that that narrative uh, importance to them, right? Uh, and Voss was a you know a huge character, uh, and the, the the story plays a, a certain part uh, to our Far Cry games. Um, you know, we did learn, learn some lessons, and when we were making Far Cry 4, uh, we have a really talented team of writers um, that approached this in a way that uh, had the narrative uh, aspects to it, had the great memorable characters, um, and kind of tied it all together into this new area and this new story that's happening within Kirat. So I think uh, fans of uh, the Far Cry series will be very pleased with, uh, with the story in Far Cry 4. It's excellent. And speaking of co-op, co-op in Far Cry 3 was completely separate. Yeah. It, was, it was just there, and now in Far Cry 4, it's looking like a almost like a drop-in, drop-out type of experience. So, how much can players expect to have open to them when they're bringing a friend along for the ride? Well, so if you you can bring a friend uh, in with you, you and uh, into the open world, and you can basically take on uh, the open world together. So you could do outposts, you could do quests, you could do a whole bunch of different things uh, with your buddy, which is something that we really wanted to bring to Far Cry. Um, you know, it's great to to, to run around and, and you know create all these great stories for yourself as you're playing but to bring a buddy along with you uh, it's it's a lot of fun so uh, I think you will be very happy to be able to bring somebody into the open world uh, explore uh, and uh, basically uh, mess stuff up basically two elephants walking through the door now you know what I mean <laughs> yes exactly two elephants if the door's wide enough otherwise a single file <laughs> Um, I mean, Far Cry 4, it's, it's cross-generational, so you've got it on your old consoles and your new consoles. What were some of the, the challenges with making a game that, you know, pushed visual boundaries, but also was more accessible to players who haven't, you know, jumped onto the next-gen boat yet? Yeah, so I mean, you know, Far Cry has always been a, a game where we've been pushing the, the the boundaries of the tech that's available to us. Uh, it's really at the you know one of the one of the core parts of, uh, of Far Cry. Um, so we developed the game obviously on a, a multiple platforms, the the old gen and the new gen, um, and we push the new gen as far as we could push it, uh, and as well the current, the, cur uh, the, the old gen, as I'm yeah. using current gen, <laughs> uh, new gen, yeah. Um, so I, I think. Uh, Visually and uh, what the player can expect from both consoles uh, will be uh, pushed to the max. I mean, you can pretty much guarantee that from the Far Cry team. So, just to wrap up, Far Cry 4 is out on November, November 18th. You got it, November 18th. Um, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PC. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much, Ryan. It was awesome speaking to you. Excellent, you too. Cool. Thanks, guys. Cheers.